it doesn't really matter how I feel. It matters how the, the audience connects. And if we can share that moment together, mission accomplished. It's, it's not relevant if I thought I was worthwhile. The, the, the moment happened regardless. Wow. That's, that's the complete opposite of what I do. I make it all about me. <laughs> This video is brought to you by LastPass. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel for local music, wherever it may be, and the people that make it, including my guest. And my guest is the singer for an LA rock band that I found on TikTok, and I've been doing that a lot lately. So, uh, you know, check out the other videos. Um, they're known for blending socially aware, kind of a punk attitude with modern classic rock and a pop-tinged protest song uh, vibe. Known as Your Bards for the Apocalypse, <laughs> their recent single, Bad Omens, is out now. Please welcome to the channel, Ruby Lane from Ruby Lane and the Wicked Divine. Say hi, Ruby. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. Welcome to the party. Uh, did I get all that right, basically? Yeah, 100%. Honestly, that's a, a killer way to define us. I think we often kind of get into the, especially with like social media content, trying to figure out how to, def to put our thing in a succinct way. And that was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I do my best. Uh, for those of you that don't know who Ruby Lane is, thank you for watching. Appreciate you. Go ahead and tell them kind of more about the the genesis of the band and why is it called The Wicked Divine? Right on. Uh, so uh, initially I was first putting out uh, music as a solo artist. Uh, my first EP was just Ruby Lane. Uh, didn't really love that experience as being just an individual in the studio. I really kind of wanted that classic rock bunch of people in the band room getting together, making music experience. And so I went to put my band together and um, I am a bit of a comic book nerd. And I was actually inspired initially by the name uh, from the wicked and the divine, this really cool comic book series. It gets into mythological gods and pop music and all sorts of chaos. And so when I was trying to like think about something really magnificent and rock and roll and fun to put together in just like a silly camp way. That was my immediate inspiration for Ruby Lane and the Wicked Divine. Very nice. Very nice. Um, I, I didn't know if there was, I didn't, I, you could have gone a couple different ways <laughs> for, for the, for why it was the Wicked Divine, but I, I like it. Um, and I did notice that uh, doing my research for this, that it, you started as just Ruby Lane and then the Wicked Divine kind of came along. So you, uh, you did sort of what I did where, you make an album, it's you because you don't have anybody else. And then when you add other people, you're like, okay, I, the name needs to change a little bit. It can't just be just me now that, that we're writing songs together. Exactly. I mean, I'm really lucky to have five band members who are all really amazing artists in their own right. They have totally shaped the way we create our music. And so it wouldn't be the same to just slap exclusively my name on it. I mean, I might be the initial action of the, the songwriting process, but I, it truly wouldn't be the music I have without the band members that are a part of this project. Nice. It's nice to hear, you know, we haven't gone full diva yet. <laughs> no, not yet. All right. Uh, by the way, uh, it's almost your birthday, so way to get older. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes, it is. <laughs> We're 29 again, right? Uh, sure, we'll call it. No, I'm, I'm happy to say I am uh, turning 32. I am past the age of being scared of aging in rock music. You know, I think that more people need to uh, embrace the fact that we like create music post being 18. And uh, for a long time, I was really, really scared of like, not making it in time or not doing things or whatever. But I've come to just really embrace the journey and be happy with where I am when I'm there. Yeah, and it's, it's a hard lesson to, to learn. It's a hard truth to embrace but yeah uh you're familiar with huey lewis in the news yes huey lewis didn't get discovered till he was 40 busking playing harmonica in i think it was prague he yeah was i like, mean it, it's all it takes all kinds right like it's it's always a unique journey for everybody and we get really rushed into this idea of like a certain timeline for what success has to be. And I think I wasted more years that I could have been actively creative and like just having fun, worrying about like if I was out of time already. And if you're not dead, you're not out of time. So, you know, we should just keep going. There you go. I mean, look at ZZ Top. So, right. <laughs> uh, I want to pull out one of my usual interview questions and, and room six, you know, OGs will, will recognize this one. 
I want to talk about your earliest musical influence. By that, I mean, do you remember a moment where you said, I want to do that? Yes. Um, I was uh, actually just got to kind of celebrate this, uh, but the um, Green Day, their 25th anniversary for American Idiot just came out. And uh, that was the first uh, like real rock concert I went to in seventh grade. And really the first album that like when I got that CD, I memorized it front to back. All the lyrics had those line notes in my hands at all times. I was just like so obsessed with the way that they could be this theatrical and, and, and tell such a beautiful story, but still be totally punk rock, still, you know, be anti-establishment, be able to make such a splash and, and such an impact in a, in a mainstream way to take these very punk ideals and get so many people to actually listen and question things. It was the coolest thing in the world. And it was definitely something that like permanently shook me to my core as an artist. Nice. Um, my my wife and her family have a bit of a history with Green Day, actually. Um, you probably know that before they were Green Day, they were called, you remember what they were called? Oh, gosh. No, I'm so, I'm such a bad fan. <laughs> what was it called? Uh, I believe it was Sweet Children. Okay, and for sure. Out of, and they're out of um, Crockett uh, in the Bay Area, uh, you know, San Francisco area. Mm -hmm. My wife was at their first show as Sweet Children at some local uh, like uh, uh, recreation center type thing where you know it was all ages. And she was one of the kids throwing Coke cans of banana peels at them because they were so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's, then, that's the perfect story to possibly have, I think. <laughs> like like they, they didn't start out sounding like that for sure. And they're a great example. Like, hey, you know, way to come up, boys. You, know, you, you definitely worked on it. Uh, her sister, my sister-in-law, was in a uh, Amoeba Records in, in Berkeley and was some guy was blocking the door and she's like, you know, excuse me, excuse me, and tries to like push by him. She goes outside and says, who's that guy I think he is? Billy Joe? It was Billy Joe. So <laughs> that's the whole like Full the, 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 the whole little history there. Yeah, I thought it was funny. Um, so I had a thought I lost it. Oh, yeah. If you want to be like Ruby and be featured on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed or both. Hit me up using my email address down below or by clicking the Room 6 social media link. That's where you'll find all the ways that you can, you know, support the channel, like buy some sweet merch at room6.shop. Or what the heck, go ahead and click that like, share, and subscribe button. It all helps, and I thank you. All right, back to that. Back to you. Enough of that YouTube crap. <laughs> now, working in the arts and with the public can be interesting. What's your craziest story from working in a theater? Uh, well... I actually, uh, so I do work in a theater right now and I work in kind of the front of house staff. So I get to interact with all sorts of kind of different people. But uh, a couple of years ago, we got to actually host the premiere of Pat Benatar's musical. And uh, so she was in and out throughout the whole experience and Neil Girardi as well. They were both very hands on with the creative wow. process. Uh, so uh, anyone who knows me knows I'm like a, a huge Pat Benatar fan. And so uh, getting to just kind of like hang out behind and just like watch her, you know, give notes and like do all this. It was just like such a mind blowing experience, especially to see that like mishmash of like theater with like just absolute rock star status. It was crazy. And she's so tiny. I had no, like yeah. she's such a powerful person. And then like I'm five three and she's shorter than me. So that was like mind blowing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's amazing how many of these uh, super rock stars are very short, actually. Uh, right. And <laughs> part, of, part of it's trick of the camera angles, and, and part of it's just uh, their persona is so much bigger than, than life. Um, yeah, I met Dido. You know Dido? Mm -hmm. I met Dido, and she's this cute, this little tiny thing. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. It was really cute. Um, so how long... I, I, back, let me let me rephrase it. You've been performing live for a while, both as Ruby Lane and Ruby Lane and the Wicked Divine. Um, what's your most like memorable show memory? If you had to pull one out, it's like, yep, as rock and roll. What is your most favorite show memory uh, of performing? Either you checked off some rock star wishlist thing, or things went way off the rails, or or what? Uh, well. One of my like favorite memories is actually from our Radical Love single release party. Uh, it was our first time as a band trying to really throw a show by ourselves. You know, we've been very enmeshed in the L.A. nightlife scene. We've played 
a lot of the famous clubs and that's been really fun in its own right. But we really wanted to make a, a community experience for our, you know, little group of, of fans and friends here in LA. And so we rented out our own space. We brought all of our friends together. It was my first time trying to put an actual like sound set stage together on my own because it was not designed for that. So it was quite a learning experience. It was such a cool moment of camaraderie with so many different artists. And uh, we also raised some money for Trans Lifeline that night. And that was really beautiful for me because I really believe in uh, connecting music with activism and being able to use our song to even just like raise a little bit of money was such a rewarding experience. Very cool. And I, I love anytime you can kind of, I don't want to say the word control, but anytime you can kind of steer the event as opposed to just being a band on the bill, it's it's a lot of work. I've done it myself, but it's also very rewarding when people show up and show out. Yeah. I mean, like, obviously it is a lot of work. It's not something that's always a sustainable thing to do for yourself, you know, month in, month out. But, uh, you know, I think a lot of like the, the nightlife scene can become really transactional, you know, promoters just, you know, getting their minimum ticket limit and stuff. So, having the opportunities when we are able to like come together under a united reason and you know just support one another there's always a different energy in the room people are always a little more plugged in there's just a, a certain way where everyone's connected because we're all there to to make music and not just there to you know spend some time at a bar <laughs> yeah right don't right. forget to hit the merch table hey yeah. for sure and you know it you know those are all great in its own right too but it, it is special when you get to kind of like get out of that space and do something, you know, a little more curated, a little more unique. Definitely. Um, I, for those of you that don't know, I uh, moved here just a couple months ago, actually. I'm, I'm in Vancouver, Washington right now. I moved up here from Las Vegas, Nevada, where I was focusing a lot on the, the local scene because it's Vegas. And so I'm, I'm starting to figure out the local music scene up here in the, the PNW. Um, and one of the things I did down there uh, a few times actually was put on what I called a, a room six showcase where I would take five acts that have been on the show and maybe they performed live back when I did in-person interviews, or maybe they gave me a music video uh, after this, uh, after the interview, something like that. I would put on a show and feature five of them and say, Hey, here's your chance to actually like turn up, play loud, and I'll go ahead and pay you. Uh, it's not a showcase in that you're play playing for exposure. It's showcase because you're all have been on room six. And um, I would I would totally like design a one off merch shirt for it. And I would, you know, there it was always a lot of work, but it was always fun. And it always was so nice to see the local scene show up, not for me, but to show up to these these act these lineups where you might never see these bands together on the same lineup again, because I've interviewed all of it. You name it, like rock, so songwriter, rap, Senegalese, world beat you know, music, musicians. Um, just the only thing I haven't really in, done is no, I've, I've had country and Western and Western. Uh, and it's, it's so, I love putting these, these bills together. You're just like only on room six, would you see all this in one night? It's not all death metal. It's not all country, you know? So, <clears throat> so from there, we're actually going to take just a, a, little, a small little break here. Uh, I want to hear a message from future Josh and we'll be right back in just a moment. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. Want to know a universal truth? Passwords are a pain. Want to know another one? Having only one password makes everything a lot easier. That's what I use. LastPass to secure my online presence. LastPass is like autopilot for all your passwords, giving you peace of mind wherever you go online. With over 33 million people using it and plans ranging from free to $4 a month, it's a great way to secure your privacy and save you time and frustration and hassle trying to remember which password goes where. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get a Teams subscription for only $4 a month. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to LastPass for being a sponsor, and let's get back to today's show. Welcome back. And if that sponsor spot interested you at all, please consider clicking the link down below and you'll save some money. I'll get some money. It's a win-win. Stick around. We're going to be seeing a, a kind of a music video slash live stream, you know, uh, recording uh, from Ruby Lane and the Wicked Divine. And uh, yeah, stick around and hopefully you'll like that. <laughs> but 
I wanted to switch. Uh, we, we talked about earliest musical influence and we talked about kind of your, your favorite show memory. I wanted to ask, is there a dream gig that's on your, that you're, 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 you're aiming for? Oh gosh. Um, I would really love to play Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Uh, it, 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 it's, uh, it's one of the, like, it, it's the old, uh, LA cemetery with all of the, 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 like big celebrities, you know, Barry, Marilyn Monroe, Toto, the dog, the Johnny Ramone, everybody. Um, but it, it's one of those things where, uh, they have this lodge there that they do shows. I think the Linda Linda's just did an album release party there just recently, I believe, but, um, uh, it's just such a fun unusual place to do a show and this moment i found out that they have shows there i was like that's that's success right there if you get to play one of the biggest cemeteries in the world what else can you ask for you know serenading all all the little hollywood ghosts out there that's that's the dream <laughs> way, way to keep it thematic with halloween right like a, <laughs> at time at time of recording we're a couple weeks from halloween and i was bemoaning the fact off camera how we didn't i, I should have said like let's dress up in costume or something and uh, no, you had to bring it. You brought it right back. Good job. Can't I help it. Really, I'm, I'm a Halloween fan at heart. I can't. I can't stop myself. I didn't realize this, uh, in LA cemeteries were, were live music venues, but okay. Uh, you know, every so often, you know, LA is full of surprises. <laughs> God, what are the permits like for that? Anyway, uh, you're not disturbing the neighbors. <laughs> right? Exactly. It's actually perfect. The residents, I should say. <laughs> oh man, you know why it's so hard to get into a cemetery, right? Oh, why is that? People are dying to get in. That's true. <laughs> I got a dozen of them. Anyway, uh, you've been pretty public about dealing with imposter syndrome. Uh, I actually made a video of it early on in, in the channel's uh, history. What is your go-to mental trick or, or mantra to snap yourself out of it? Honestly, my main thing has just been trying to decenter myself from the conversation because I, it takes so much energy to think about like if you're good enough, if you're worthy of it, if whatever. But it's just like that just makes it all about you. And that's not really the reason for creating art in the first place. I mean, that's not the reason most of us get into it. It's not about, you know, how cool or, or worthwhile you are as an individual. It's about telling a story and sharing that with people. And so the more I realize if I just get myself out of the way and stop caring about, you know, where I belong in this narrative, but focus on what I'm actually just trying to give and make that as good as it can be. You know, it, it doesn't really matter how I feel. It matters how the, the audience connects. And if we can share that moment together, mission accomplished. It's, it's not relevant if I thought I was worthwhile. The, the, the moment happened regardless. Wow. That's that's the complete opposite of what I do. I make it all about me. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I just, whatever works, right? Like, yeah, no, but... Um, my my personal thing, not to make it about me, but uh, my personal thing has always been imposter syndrome before I perform. One, as soon as the first lyric or or chord starts, then it, the muscle memory kicks in from all the rehearsing, which is why practicing is important, kids. And then it's just like, okay, here we go. It's kind of like company's coming, got to get the place clean, got to get the place clean. But the second they show up, you're like, well, that's as good as it's going to get. Uh, that's how I, I, I have, I talk myself up and hype myself up to the point where I'm like, shut up. They're here to see you, even if they're not. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, like there's a reason why you're on stage and, and, uh, I, I get, I get like almost abusive with myself, which is terrible, terrible. Don't do this. But no, I like the way you, you decenter yourself. That, that's a great phrase. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, work on that one. <laughs> So a couple more questions here, and then we're going to see that, uh, that little music video live stream clip. And it's a question that we all hate to get. And I, we, we kind of talked about it earlier, but forgive me for asking this. How would you define your band's musical style? Elevator pitch, go! Uh, well, jokingly, I like to say it's musical theater rock. Um, I, I am a theater kid, no surprise there. Uh, I think that we have a very theatrical styling, but simultaneously we really are rooted in the the, the classic rock, like 60s through 80s, I would say we take, borrow a lot of different elements from, but ultimately, you know, I think we want to honor that kind of era of protest music where rock was really coming forward to, you know, unite the people against, you know, these massive social issues. And we're trying to kind of, not be pastiche and just you know we're not trying to just 
be a cover band. We're trying to have our own interpretation of it. And I think that we, you know, take our theatrical nature and kind of bring it into the modern with some pop in there. Honestly, the way you described us at the beginning was so much more elegant, but uh, that's kind of my roundabout way to go about it. You can use that for free. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Um, last question. You made it. Yay. So circling back to that earliest musical influence question, okay? We're going to jump in our time machine. We're going to do that thing that everybody wishes they could do and go back and tell yourself something. What is one thing that you wish somebody had told you when you were when you said, I want to do that? What is one thing you wish someone had said, hey, you're going to need to know this? And don't say change your strings. <laughs> well, see, I don't play guitar, so I'm lucky. I Lead singers, we just have a microphone. Life's easy for us. Yeah, <laughs> right. Cold. But oh, gosh, if I were to go back and tell myself something, it would really be just to jump in and don't waste any time. I, I spent so much time wrapped up in fear and insecurity and, you know, looking for approval from others. And the second that I decided that that wasn't relevant and I was just going to live my life in the way that I was actually happy and, you know, maybe we're successful. Hopefully we are. That'd be lovely. But even if, you know, I die with nothing and no recognition, I will at least have known that I made my choices in the way that I wanted to on my terms. And I did everything I ever wanted to try to the best of my abilities. And I don't need other people to tell me it's good enough. I don't need to worry about what people think. And all of that time was just years wasted. So if I could just tell my child self something, it'd be like, just go for it and do it now. Cause there could have been so many more years of fun. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I'm 52. Don't, don't be like me kids. I, I really waited. I waited way too long to start making music in general uh, and, and just, and also start performing, but also, I let, you know, adulthood responsibilities and, and the fear of, you know, the reason we all go to job, go to work and make money is because we are afraid of losing certain levels of comfortableness. The, the uncomfortableness is where you, the magic happens a lot of times. hundred so, percent. Yeah. But that being said, you also, you know, want to be responsible enough to not say, you know, I'm a rock, I'm a rock star while you're sleeping in the gutter. <laughs> There's. It's a complicated balance and it's only gotten harder with time. I mean, you know, the, there's a lot of, of financial challenges and it's it's not to, to glamorize the experience, but I do think if you're living your life on your terms and yeah, that does involve figuring out how to do so responsibly and to take care of the necessities of life while still making time for the joy and the passion. But if you are able to do that, the stress and 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 the extra work it takes to make it all happen, I do truly believe is worth it. Agreed. Now, if only uh, millions of people would agree with us, right? <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of people are scared to make the leap because it's it, it is hard. You know, it's a major leap of faith, but it does pay off if not in the ways that you're hoping for in those like big magical dream ways of paying off. I think just knowing that you can take a leap and trust yourself and and to go after the things you you want, I think that that's the reward in itself. I couldn't say it any better. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for coming on the channel. Uh, we're gonna no worries. We're gonna check out the little music video coming up here, and then we'll catch you in the outro. In the meantime, we'll temporarily say goodbye. So see you in a minute.
I want to thank Ruby Lane for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome music video slash live stream video. If you want to know more about them, please check out those social media links that I put down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe, click over there and ring the bell so you get notified. You know the drill. And if you want to hear my own music, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Ruby. Bye. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.